I'm about to get up some water real quick. So, got a match that's about to happen, and I need to stay hydrated. Also, I'm a little tired. But, players will be getting the full energized Sharky, most likely. We'll see. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. back in the meantime. Okay. Hello, testing, testing. Can you guys hear me? Just uh, making sure. All right, sweet.
let me announce this in the Discord and then. Messix will be here shortly, so if you can just bear with us. So Buffy you can continue warming up. As people continue trickling in. Hope everyone's been having a good day.
Okay. Mestix will be here shortly. It was just playing TC. So. Thank y'all for being patient. Oh, so it's just Messix. I thought it was Messix 17. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you guys once again for being patient. And thank the players for making time out of your day to come play today. <clears throat> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Gauntlet Ascension. I'm your favorite underwater host, Sharky. And today we have an exciting matchup between the Wavy Ones and the Dry Wellers. Both teams have lost six matches apiece, and they're looking to continue to increase their win ratio. Wavy One's looking to even up their record six to six. The Drywellers are looking to win their first match of the second half of the season. Up first, we're going to be having our Transcendence play, which is Messix versus Guafi. They're going to have Wide versus Galaxy Biscuit. Sidnet versus Alex T will be third, and Mari versus Packy of fourth. Uh, players, if you would like same piece sets, do let me know now so I can generate you all a seed. If not, then just give me ready, then we'll be good to go. Essex is uh, fixing stuff with the internet, so <laughs> bear with me, I guess. I do have the seat ready to be generated, though. Uh, it wouldn't be a regular season gauntlet match without some issues. Uh, by the way, Guafi hand cam isn't needed. I prefer... Uh, at least for whenever I stream. I prefer face cam over hand cam. Oh. Hmm. Uh, this is what I was looking for. 
All right, Messix, do you want the uh, or do you want SPS? Bingo. Found what I was looking for. Okay, here's the SPS. When both players are ready, we can get the first match underway. All right, sorry about that. Both players are ready for game number one. Let's go ahead and get them counted down. Here we go in three, two, one. Tetris. We got a little bit of a delayed start over here from SX. I think things should be fine. Of course, that probably could be my latency to mess six. <laughs> there we go. We do have the star from mess six. Yikes. I'll probably give it a refresh after this game. Uh, Gl Gilded Lizard, thank you so much for the raid. You guys are just in time for our first match here between Guafi and mess six. Guafi is going to be ahead by. Almost a, uh, like, almost four Tetris's worth in lines. Had a little bit of delay on Messex's part. But that being said, this is actually a very pivotal match to open up this team match here. Both of these transcendents will be the key in determining which team, at least I personally feel, which team is going to come out on top. As far as the rest of the matches go, I feel like there isn't a distinct advantage for either team, especially the captain's match. Captain's match is pretty much even. So winner of this particular matchup is going to be advantageous. This is going to be Messix's second game? Second or third game playing for the Wavy Ones. This is Guapi's second game plan for the Drywellers joining in the second mid-season draft. But as of right now, Messix 194, Guafi 245. Guafi not able to get a piece all the way over to the left. As 
As of right now, things are getting a bit complicated for both players. Beautiful burn over there from Guafi. Does have a long bar dependency that's generated. Now there's two long bar dependencies. Messix with that Tetris is going to take the lead, and Messix is actually caught up in lines. And Guafi would like to get the board brought back down. Oh, that TP is going to help in the center. A lot of high accuracy placements are going to be needed up top. The double rotation on the T there. Guafi. Looks like that's going to be wrapped. Guafi tops it at 310. Messix is going to be good for game number one at 321. It's a really tough situation for Guafi to survive there. But that's just the first game. We still got plenty more to go. All right. So I've been like semi distracted. Uh, what's it called? Just won CT3. Yo, congrats, Nay. It would be Nay, right? Not me. Yeah, it would be Nay. Congrats, Nay, on your win. Amazing. Me done something I've never done. I've never won CT. Wait for this ad to go. Uh, the next seed for the players should be DF. DF should be the first two for the seed. DF. When both players are ready, then uh, we're good to go. I mean, just join the Mino League. You could be better. Uh, the next time the Mino League has a match. <laughs> okay. There's the readies from both players. Let's go ahead and get them counted down. Here we go in three, two, one. Tetris. I mean... The Mino League is a subset of Gauntlet, which is my event, so yes. And yeah, this time much closer in start time and things actually look pretty stable stream-wise on Messex's part, so we should be good to go. Of course, Guafi looking to tie things up one to one. As of right now, there's not a website that uh, updates. Uh, well, they're working on the database for ELO and for world records. There isn't a website for that just yet. But right now, 118 to now 122. Messix in the lead following that Tetris. Guafi, nice burnout too. Very efficient. It's going to be using that SP. Forced to take a burn and really untimely s pieces and that's interesting placement on that t and it actually looks like players are running into a uncomfortable piece sequence and it's uncomfortable in the sense that finding the right way to get tetris ready with a comfortable board even though it's level 18 so hopefully these players can manage 
it was a little bit difficult. Messix does score Tetris first one after uh, quite a few burn lines from both players, and Guafi knocks one down. Going to be trailing by two Tetrises here, roughly 40,000 points. Messix with the Vitz, the signature move for the Wavy Ones. They're the team that sets up the most Vitz. Like, statistically speaking, it's actually kind of wild. Especially bits of the delayed nature. But 262 now for Messix, holding on to a 3 Tetris lead. Looking for a J piece, finds one, needs another, utilizes the S piece, but is now I piece dependent. Or. No, it's just going to burn out of it. Unfortunately, Messick's going to be set back slightly from this. He does get a long bar. 314 now for Messick's, 257 for Guafi. As I said, this is Guafi's second match of Gauntlet. First match was up against Sodium, which played admirably well. But Sodium, at least up until, uh, or not up until, has been con consistent 600k transition. And that's something hard to combat it up against. Guapi having to do some down stacking has made a comeback. 315 and now 327. Messick's going to try and generate some separation. Guapi going to be looking for an eyepiece here. There it is. Dirty Tetris for Guafi. Almost didn't get it in his desired location. You kind of see that was a little bit of an eye-opener. And really complicated pieces for Messix. That IP is going to help out tremendously. Set up for another Tetris. Dirty center wall for Messix. Looking for a way to burn out of this, and Guafi. Great Tux, not Tetris 30 for that long bar. Oh, wow, what an adjustment over there from Guafi. 4-11, Guafi takes the lead. Messex at 404, not in a position to score at the moment. We are closing in on the transition. 481 for Guafi. Messex with a couple Tetrises left to go. Guafi with one. Next burn line will send us a transition over here for Guafi. And there it is. A 527 transition for Guafi. Messex, on the other hand, is going to transition at a 503. So a one Tetris advantage for Guafi. And both players having to do some cleanup here on level 19. Guafi is almost back in a scoring position. Messex really having some trouble here in the center of the stack. Eyepiece is just really hanging a bunch on the center and continuing to put a lot of weight. As Guafi is looking for a J piece, gets an eyepiece, hangs a piece over to the left. So now his eyepiece depending on the left, gets the eyepiece over, opens up the well, attacks for Guafi. 591 now for Guavi Messix. Still trying to get pieces to the left. It is hanging. A lot of similar issues for both of these players in this particular game. And now Messix is in down stacking mode. Can't get the piece all the way over to the right. Messix going to top it at 517. Guavi ties things up 1 to 1. Ooh, making a website. Interesting, interesting. <sighs> One day, Gauntlet will have a website.
apparently Messix needs to restart the router, so I uh, guess we have to wait for the stream to come back online. But I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Get, make sure uh, you guys know what your next seed is, which next seed should be E0, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, these were the tropical flavors. Blue Water, thank you so much for the follow. I hope you enjoy your stay here in the Shark Tank. People on YouTube are funny. Thank you. There isn't a... There's a bunch of different resources. So, for example, uh... In terms of, like, spins, uh... Spins and stuff like that, I have a video on my channel. Uh... Yeah, there isn't a dedicated wiki for it. It right, looks like we're about to be getting started with our uh, next game. Dude. I think as long as I'm doing traditional restreams, I'm about to have to force to buy Turbo. Yes, E0 is your next seed. There's just so much that happens in classic Tetris nowadays, just incredibly complicated. But when we do have a ready from both players, we already have a ready from Kwapi. Looking on a ready from Messex, and then we can get things underway. All good, all good. I feel like a lot of, uh, whenever it comes to, like, classic Tetris, there's so many different, like, there's so many levels to it. You obviously have, like, your introduction, uh, introductory levels. Uh, oh, I forgot to disable that. Haha. <laughs> I gotta remember going to stream elements and disable the sponsor thing. Whoops. Anyways. There's so many like different levels when it comes to learning classic Tetris and learning more about it, especially whenever you really get deep in there and you start learning about different adjustments and setups like a uh, five below uh, common one. Uh, Vix is another common one. Not too many people. I think S flat's kind of self-explanatory, but you get into stuff like that. And then if you get to really technical stuff like learning about game game crash and stuff then it's when things get a tad bit more complicated but it does look like we do have messex here and messex and guapi are both ready 
Thank y'all for being so patient. Let's get counted down to game number three. Here we go in three, two, one. Tetris. Ooh, that was pretty close on timing. Both players opening up with identical openers. Oh, there's a differentiation there. Messick's filling out the left more so than Guafi. And you can already see both players actually experiencing various complications. Oh, this can get dangerous. Guafi already having to go into an early burn. Eyepiece is going to be one. It's set up for a dirty, but it's just going to take the triple. Able to recognize a good opportunity to burn. Gets the well open, but it's going to take the stack down. And there's the Vitz over there on column nine from Messex. What a bizarre <laughs> opener from both of these players. But a Tetris is going to be scored nonetheless. Another Tetris is going to be scored for Messex. Set up for the T-spin now. And misses the T-spin, unfortunate. With that, Guafi does take the lead. 61,000 to 58,000. Both players in a comfortable position. Messix operating off a of road to Guafi with quite the hang there. But it's going to be able to slide pieces underneath. So should be fine. Ooh. Sets up for a dirty Tetris. Able to knock it down. Already, this game... A lot of <laughs> entertaining setups and solutions being found from both players here. Guafi still going to hold on to a minor advantage. And that's the thing. Despite Messix having a messier stack, so to speak, Messix was able to score Tetris's regularly despite being in a dirty and elevated stack. However, this is going to be like the first real time that we see Messix slow down. That SPs hang over to the left is one of the more annoying misdrops to try and navigate through. Tetris was still scored, but it's now going to be looking for an eyepiece or going to know just immediately dump the J and commit to three burn lines early, looking for another J or an eyepiece. And now Guafi, an opportunity that could have been used to extend the lead. It's going to fall behind. Or not fall behind, but have a potential to have his lead neutralized. Like he's gonna decide to operate off a of row two. And on level 18, completely reasonable thing to do as well. Wapi goes for the flat L burn. Well is open. There's the Tetris for Messix, Tetris for Guapi. 215 for Guapi, 212 for Messix, and still has a four line advantage. Guapi is still gonna be holding on to this real time lead and the accidental wrong rotation on that T. The adjustment was there. But once again, just an execution error. Guapi has burned the stack all the way down to the bottom, looking for an L. And after burning that line, is back to the right-hand side. Messix does take the lead, though. So, after a little bit of a uh, turbulent, so to speak, uh, opener for both players, looks like players are now in a relatively comfortable position. That OP is going to force two burn lines on Messix's part. But otherwise, the stacks are ideal there is an L piece dependency forming on Guafi's side it's going to use that I piece to convert out of it but as far as things go pretty stable boards and Messix is going to be holding on to a lead Three thirteen now for Guafi set up for the next Tetris Messix at 351 and ooh, things are getting a little bit complicated for Guafi here. Gonna be forced to burn. Can? Oh, actually, potentially give an opportunity to open up the well. Couldn't score a Tetris. Messix also having to fight that same complication. Messix gonna be... Oh, actually... Oh, dang it. Messix missed the burn. Still gonna have to do a little bit of burning. And now Guafi, several misdrops in a row. Left side is a massive point of concern. Gonna go for the flat L burn. Gonna be wanting a J-piece. J-piece is not found. That's the wrong placement. Guafi's in, top, in danger of topping out. Guafi tops out at 343. Messix is good for game number three. And is now on match point.
Dang, Stochastic Squad out here watching. You had Noah, you had Cobra. I didn't see what you were going for, but there's also a different, there's more efficient ways to mitigate that particular stack. That being said, both players are in fact ready for game number four. Let's see if Guapi can force a decider. Here we go. Let's go ahead and get them counted down in three, two, one. Tetris. Uh, you gotta love the SZ start, everyone's favorite. First touch of the game is going to go to Guafi. And Messick's really building up that left. Taking the old adage, uh, spam left, literally. And Messick is in trouble. Oh, wait, that mid drop could be... Hold on. It's still possible. Messick needs ideal pieces here. Messick tops out at 3,800. We are going to a decider. All right, we got it ready from both players. First match ending in a decider. And as I mentioned, whoever wins this match definitely gives the team an advantage. And I personally feel, being the grand overseer of the gauntlet event, that whichever one of these teams wins this first match here is going to be perfectly or not going to be perfectly, is going to be the team that takes the match. But we'll have to see. A delayed Vitz is going to be set up over here from Messex. Going to be forced to do various burns to try and keep it alive. Four burns have been committed by both players so far, and a Tetris at the same time is going to be scored. This is going to be a very beneficial opener. For Guafi Messix. Setting up for a dirty Tetris. But Longbar, nowhere to be found. There it is, dirty Tetris for Messix. Guafi is going to find a clean one. Now, Messix is going to opt to try and burn this out. Not too many clear options. Messix going for row two now. He's going to knock down a Tetris and should be able to sustain this. But definitely was a tricky opening for both of these players. Guapi was able to make the best of the pieces.
Messex once again back into a dig situation. And oh, the double flip on the Z. This is still very diggable. Now an IP dependency has been built up on column two. Now in column four. JP's goes in the column four dependency and IP's makes its way into column two. Messix gets this left well open, closes it up temporarily, but reopens it. Good set of pieces of JP's to bring the stack down would be perfect. Actually, that works out flawlessly. Messix now just waiting on the long bar, and so is Guafi. 297 to now 206. This long bar, nowhere to be found. Getting your daily dose of gauntlet RNG here. Messix would love a JP's. Gets the T piece instead. Finds an alternative solution. What is this drought? There it is! Tetris for Messex can finally take a sigh of relief. A massive drought that players had to endure right there. Another Luffo Tetris over there for Messex. Now Guafi does get the long bar. Couldn't use it for a Tetris, but feels a crucial three deep dependency. And Messex with the left wheel bits. Tetris for Guafi going to go up to 338. Messex at 305. No Tetris for Guafi. Gonna get Tetris ready, utilizing that long bar. And not uses the next one, knock down a Tetris. Still got a little ways to go until a transition. Just under 20 lines for Messex and just over 20 lines for Guafi. Nice adjustment on the L. By the way, definitely a scary situation and definitely would like be interested to see how big that drought was. And with that, Messix is back over to the right-hand side. Two Tetrises remain possible here on level 18. A 48-piece drought is what I'm reading from chat. 477 for Guafi. Two Tetrises left for him. Messix has one Tetris left on the table. And there it is, Messix transitions, 446, Guafi. Not getting the best pieces to go kind of perfect. As a matter of fact, he's going to be looking for an L piece. He's not going to find it. Guafi's not going to transition clean. But Guafi will be reaching the transition. He's going to transition at 483. Beautiful placement on the J. Well is open. Messix and Guafi now both waiting on the long bar. Messex aggressive tuck and needs the log bar sooner than later. Log bar's not showing up. Messex is in danger. This is the decider. I'm not sure if anything can make it over to left. Messex hangs in at 478. Messex tops out. Looks like we are running into another drought with the long bar just coming towards the end. Guafi takes game number five, and the drywellers now lead the match 1 to 0. What a droughty game for a decider. Up next, we're going to be having Wide versus Galaxy Biscuit. Let me see if I can do something about that string element thing. Because that should not be active right now. should be fine so we'll let guapi play this out while uh wide and galaxy uh, go live on streams
Either way, it was a very tough game. Even now, 61 bars. Not the easiest to try and maintain, and Guafi's been actually very efficient here in the post-transition. Oh, well, that's the commentator's curse if I've seen one. 835. Still. Drywellers are up 1-0. But let's see if Wide can even up the score. We're going to head into our intermission, and we'll be right back. Yeah, Pecky had his debut up against the Rogues uh, in Drywaller's last match, actually.
All right, wide and galaxy. If you would like same pieces, verify in chat. Galaxy has said yes. So wide, if uh, it is also possible for you, then uh, yeah, just let me know what y'all want to do, and we can get the second match underway. Focusing hard on the level 19 star right now. All right. Why are we doing a SPS or is that a we're just doing a regular match or non SPS? I guess you could say. Okay, here's your seat. Got it ready from both players, then we can get the match counted down. You're playing in Gauntlet. You need to be careful regardless. <laughs> we got it ready from Wide, and we got it ready from Galaxy. Let's go ahead and get them counted down. Here we go in three, two, one. Tetris. And you can see JZS. Players are on the same piece sets. We got a quite the interesting opener over here from Galaxy. Wide, able to stack this opener, what you can say, flawlessly. First section of the game is going to go to Wide. After that, Galaxy has gotten the stack back under control. It's only going to be trailing by a Tetris, which in the early game, you know, all it takes is just for one dig. Or... Just an unfortunate piece sequence for your opponent's board. And that one Tetris lead can easily disappear. Kind of like what happened just now. And 
Wide has been forced to do a lot of burning here. Does get a triple. IP is going to fill in dependency. Things should be fine. But as it stands, Galaxy with the pace advantage, so to speak. There's Tetris for Galaxy wide at 105. Galaxy at 120. And both players with manageable stacks. Why gonna take a very disciplined triple there? Oh, just narrowly makes it over to the right hand side. A hang at that height would have been fatal. Galaxy really not happy with that L hang there. It's gonna be spending a lot of lines just trying to get it under control. Looks like that seems to be another misdrop on that T. Didn't look intentional. But the board is almost open. Wide was able to amass a 70,000 point lead. Galaxy is going to start trying answering back now. Tetris is going to be scored for both players. 184 now for Galaxy. 231 for Wide and a roughly timed O piece. Didn't have anywhere else for it on the board, so had to dump it over to the right. And Galaxy, couple of misdrops. Another misdrop. This could be top out territory for Galaxy if he's not careful. Able to get pieces over to the left. Very crucial. Not going to go for the tuck. Oh, piece doesn't make it over to the right. And that might have sealed the deal. Galaxy's going to top it at 188. White is good for game number one. We do have a ready from wide. We got a ready from Galaxy. Let's go and get them counted down. Game number two. We go in three, two, one. Tetris. Z, J, Z. That's the start we get, and both players with identical openers. Oh, never mind. Galaxy focusing on a little bit more vertical space, and Wide having to do a couple set of burns early on. And a lot of rough placements over here from Galaxy. It's going to force him to burn an opportunity was presented to potentially build up an early lead. But now both players are basically going to be neck and neck. Galaxy is going to score a Tetris first, though. And Wide, not too comfortable with this particular situation. It's level 18, so pieces are going to be able to make it to the left and right more easily than our faster speeds. And so Y should be just fine. Definitely a uncomfortable opener for both players. This galaxy was trying his hardest to avoid going for that long bar dependency. And it looked like you could argue that was a delay burn placement on the J. At least I hope it was. If it was a misdrop, then it had a nice uh, solution to it. Anyways, 83,000 for galaxy, 63,000 for wide. Wide, gonna knock down a dirty Tetris, gonna go into the lead. Galaxy's gonna knock down a clean one, though. 
And why continuing to go for this dirty center well? But he's also playing it very disciplined. And like that, White is back on the right-hand side as we run headfirst into another drought. Our biggest drought for today has been 48. A safety triple for Wide. Finds the long bar just the right time. Knocks down a Tetris. 126 for Wide. And Galaxy survives the drought as well. 148 for Galaxy. Great drought management on both players' side. And now, looks like we might be running into another drought. Galaxy throwing these pieces over to the left. It's going to get the well reopened. A Tetris was scored for wide. And Galaxy is going to find that same Tetris. 181 for Galaxy. 180 for wide. Galaxy with the pace advantage. And now the real-time advantage. Just scoring that Tetris. There's something to be said about this game. Both of these players have been displaying phenomenal drought management. Definitely going too aggressive at any one point. Could have led to a top out. Galaxy does knock down a Tetris, but does have a hole in column three that needs to be dealt with in some fashion. Whether that's to go for row two or actually no, perfect pieces align. The advantage that Galaxy had is going to be basically gone. But the board is in an ideal spot. Oh, that eyepiece is going to be perfect. And a perfect O-piece. Galaxy is Tetris ready. 300,000 for wide. Galaxy knocks down. Tetris goes up to 285. And nice. Galaxy finds the adjustment at the last possible second, too. Another Tetris for Galaxy. 308 now for him. But a small miss dropping now. It's going to be interesting to see how Galaxy finds a way to resolve this. We are getting close to the transition. Under 30 lines for wide and a little bit over 30 lines for Galaxy. And Galaxy now experiencing some really complicated pieces. couple of misdrops from wide was able to utilize this moment that galaxy is digging in order to build up a lead looks like galaxy is going to be digging for a little bit while longer that o piece is going to be perfect and galaxy is going to be open just enough for two more tetrises before level 19 There it is. Y transitions at 396. Galaxy, on the other hand, oh, going to operate with a column 8. And Galaxy transitions at 377. So down by one Tetris going into the transition. As Y knocks down a Tetris, Galaxy trying to get set up for one. These S pieces, though, almost an S burst in the 19. If you get that joke, you're awesome. And Galaxy hangs and hangs on another eyepiece on top. Galaxy tops it at 380. White is good for game number two.
Why does that match point Galaxy needs to win this game to extend the set and start a reverse sweep? Here we go, game number three in three, two, one, Tetris. Man, Z-O-Z -Z start. Very different approaches too. Wide really focusing on building out the left and you can see that has been a constant pattern with the way that White has been stacking these openers. And so far, White has had the advantage on level 18. Obviously outlasting Galaxy in the prior game, or the game number one. And the game number two just had a one Tetris advantage. At the moment, wide having to take a few burns. Nothing too serious, but we're going to be just shy of a tie. 15 points, actually. Galaxy's going to take a single. And this is what you like to see. Both players stacking clean, not too much trouble. Obviously, not, you know, the most engaging of situations to uh, be watching or commentating over. But it is very interesting to see how whenever a, a rougher piece sequence does hit the stack on how players are able to navigate through. Two oh two for wide, one eighty for Galaxy. Both players gonna knock down a Tetris, so the lead or the difference between them stays the same. But as far as games go, this is a close one. Galaxy has to win this in order for the match to be extended. All these players are second on 18. Cousin Ivy, thank you so much for the five gift subs. I really appreciate it. Three twenty two now for Galaxy, three forty three for wide. And a lot of O pieces right there. Galaxy not gonna be able to utilize that I piece. Still gonna be trailing by this one Tetris. Both players are actually gonna get the well open at the same time. Tetris for Galaxy and a Tetris for Wide and oh Galaxy takes a triple. That's going to lead wide to extend the lead by another Tetris. There's another Tetris for Galaxy. We are closing in a level 19 transition.
One Tetris remains for Wide, one Tetris remains for Galaxy as we head into level 19 transition. Wide is going to transition 564. Is looking to put things away right now. Galaxy transitions 508. Two strong 500k transitions going into level 19. However, Galaxy has to survive level 19. Able to get that Z piece all the way over left. And I piece makes it over as well. Galaxy gets the board into a scoreable position. Just going to go for the triple, try and reset. But that square piece was not friendly whatsoever. The board has been brought back down to the bottom. Long bar dependency in column six. There it is. Tetris. Oh, dirty Tetris. And the well transfer over there for Galaxy wide. In the midst of trying to downstack to stay alive. This is a prime opportunity for Galaxy. Nice adjustment to accommodate that Z piece. Well, gets reopened. And wide. Gonna survive too. Galaxy looking for a JP's finds it. Waiting on the next long bar. Makes a misdrop on towards the left hand side. Now it's gonna be I piece dependent. And oh no! That piece didn't make it all the way over to the right. Galaxy in survival mode. Nice tap over there to the left. Nice L flat. Great survival effort over here from Galaxy. That right side makes it over. Oh my gosh. Now needs the eyepiece to go to the right hand side. Galaxy trying to do everything that he can, but I think that's going to do it. Unless he could get something over to the right. If he can get something to go over to the right, Galaxy is going to top it at 596. Wide with the sweep is going to even up the score. One to one. It looks like we're going to have some troubleshooting to do for our captain's match. So uh, we'll, have, we'll have to see how that goes. So we're going to see if we can troubleshoot with Alex T. So bear with us because our captain's match is supposed to be up next. We're going to have Sidneb and Alex T face off against each other. So don't go anywhere. Or actually you can go get a drink, but make sure you come right back. As we'll be right back with our captain's match.
Oh shoot, I need to find uh, the channel that Alex is on. All right, now we just gotta wait for Alex T to fix the stencil, and we should be good to go.
Hello, Cobra. Alright, Alex T, if you can hear me, uh, how's the stream looking? Discord. I don't know where Alex T is, so, uh, bro was just streaming and now he's kind of gone. Looks like I'm about to get a response from him.
Alright, he's still having tech issues, so... And his capture card stopped working. Dude, this freaking sucks. I think we might be able to fix the issue. Spare with us a little while longer. Look at that. I think I got it fixed. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and generate the seed. <sighs> OBS sometimes, I tell you, dude. Also, why did my sister give me like Bro, was this seven coconuts? Bro, it was six. She gave me six coconuts, bro. What the heck? Six coconut flavored gummies, not actual coconuts. No, I don't want look the coconut gummies they're good, but they're not my they're not my favorite. 
out of like the tropical patch, I would much rather have like a lychee flavored. She'll be open up, I think she has to do the vendor show, and then I think after said vendor show, she'll be opening up uh, orders, hopefully. No, we fixed one stream and now Sidnev's stream is dying. Ah. Why, dude? Oxy, just do a couple of uh, warm up games. Have I slept recently? I don't have to answer that. Slept last night. Ah, restarting PC, okay. C stuff might be slightly off stencil or not like pixel perfect but it's fine true we're just stalling so Andy can raid Would be a banger match to raid on though. Okay. Alex C stuff is fixed for the most part. Now I just gotta wait for uh, Sidnev's PC to finish restarting. And then we'll be good to go! Wanna play a quick game of Blitz? I'll hit 1200. Yep. Never mind. Yes. Thank y'all so much for being patient. Really appreciate it. Stencil ain't that bad. It's serviceable. Alright, when both players are ready, we get the captain's match underway. Oof. A long time coming, man.
I just thought of something really interesting. Might be something I experiment for playoffs or during the play in tournament. I guess it depends on the size of uh, the teams entering the playoffs. That could be some crazy freaking strategy. Holy cow, hold on a second. I gotta write this down so I don't forget. Ooh, the issue is how to get that to work yet. We'll figure it out. I think it'd be something uh, interesting, to say the least. But something that is also going to be interesting is the captain's match. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it is finally time. Stidnev and Alex T are, in fact, ready. Let's go ahead and get them counted down. Here we go in three, two, one. Tetris. ZOS start. Serviceable start. Of course, with Wide winning a huge game over Galaxy Biscuit. Now, this captain's match is very important. There's going to be a lot of pressure put on the Diamonds that are going to be playing last tonight. That will determine if a sudden death gets forced or... It's a definitive win for a team. Nice adjustment over there for Sidnev. Of course, Sidnev, your CTWC 2023 finalist. And just had an amazing qual. As second year being a captain on the Wavy Ones, third year playing for them. A little bit of stream buffer. Just keep playing, Alex, here. Yeah? Yeah, we're all good. Unlucky, dude. <laughs> dude, this match is so... So scuffed. Holy cow. We'll see if the stream reconnects. If it doesn't reconnect by the time, uh, let's say like 100 lines or so, we'll just restart. Oh, got to restart PC again. All right, yeah. So, Alex, you go ahead and top out. Lovely. This match is just gonna be cursed. Holy cow. Bro. It's gonna be one of those four hour stream days. Ready from Alex T. Oh yeah, Morlando. Alex T has like 20 longs. Yeah, so. Yeah, increment.
All right. We got it ready from both players. Let's go ahead and get them counted down. Here we go in three, two, one. Tetris. So, Alex T versus Sidnev. Quite the historic matchup here. Sidnev going with the bits. A delayed one at that. Left side's a tad bit of a concern. Waiting on an eyepiece. And there it is. Tetris for Sidnev. Going to bring the stack down a lot more comfortable. And I'll see going to hold on to a lead here by two Tetrises. Two twenty nine for Alex T, one seventy one for Sidnev. So far, things are looking pretty stable. Alex T with 300k before 60 lines. So 600k transition definitely on the table for Alex T. Sidnev could also get one, but is also going to have to be really efficient. for Alex T, 334 for Sidnev. Alex, you're going to be looking for a J piece here. It does find it. Actually goes for the conservative double using the S. Sidnev's going to top it at 403. Alex T's going to be good for game one. Wait. Did I miss something? I was drinking water.
All right, we got it ready for both players. Let's go ahead and get them counted down. Here we go in three, two, one. Tetris. It does look like we do have same pieces. Already, we see very different approaches. Sidnev going for a lot more vertical height on the stack. Alex T down low. The both players have had to take a burn here in the opener. Another Tetris for Sidna, 138 to now 94. So now we're going to have the advantage here in the beginning. Tetris for Alex T. Sinev is going to run into a small slowdown. Small slowdown is not going to be stopped. A row two is being set up over here from Sidnev. Left side, tad bit scary. Does get the well open. Oh, this is a drought. A lot of S's out of nowhere. The well is open. Great timing on the bar. Sidnev is going to survive. 451 for Sidnev. Alex T at 381. So for Sidna to almost have a 100,000 point lead, albeit ahead in lines, just really shows how much that she was pacing at the beginning. There's Tetris for Sidna, 502 to now 430. And we are closing in on the level 19 transition. Alex T with the bit setup while already having an existing long bar dependency. It's just going to burn out of it. Three Tetrises is possible for Sidnev, but 
trying to find them with a board like this. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Can try and grab one more, though. And Alex T. Ooh, that's not supposed to repeat. Wow, look at all these overhangs from Sinef. And a Tetris is going to be scored in the center. That is insane. A 623 transition for Sinef. Alex T. Three Tetrises remain before level 19 as Sinef creates a long bar dependency, but gets it filled. That was some creative solving on Sidnev's part. To get that last Tetris and have a pretty clean board going into level 19. Alex T with one more Tetris remains. Going to be just shy of a 600k transition. But he's going to be ready for it. There's the transition for Alex T. A 598. And a great placement on that T to accommodate the eyepiece in the center. There's a Tetris for Alex T. And unfortunately, these pieces are not the best to deal with. So Alex T is going to have to do some burning. And Sidnev looking for a way to navigate through this. And these pieces are actually working out a little bit. Still going to need to find a way to burn out what's on top of column three. Not going to go for the tuck. Beautiful delay burn setup over there from Sidnev. Oh, that was magnificent. 653 for Alex T, 722 for Sidnev, and another touch is going to be scored. 751 now. Alex T only down by 70,000 points and is 20 lines behind Sidnev. Meanwhile, Alex T set up here on level 21. Goes for the triple into a Tetris. 720 now for Alex. Meanwhile, Sidnev is set up pretty clean here on level 24. Alex knocks down another Tetris, 747. And, ooh, Sidnev, the aggressive adjustment. Eyepiece can't be utilized. Re well, it gets reopened. And there's the Tetris for Sidnev. Set up for two more. Or almost set up for two more. There's one. Is now set up for that second. 778 for Alex T. Eight. Make that 907 for Sidnev. And the adjustment bits. Great execution. A lot of bars, too. 939 now for Sidnev. 809 for Alex T. Alex T actually fails to get a piece over the left, so he's just going to take a conservative burn. Bring the stack, make it a little bit more comfortable. Alex T gets the well open just in time. Tetris is going to be scored. 847 down by 100K. And, ooh. Oh, no, not now. Looks like we're having another stream issue on Sidnev's part. Last known score for Sidnev was 944. Alex T at 881. There it is. Oh. No, dude. But 948 to now. Sidnev's last known score of 944. Alex T, one more Tetris will get him the max. This is really unfortunate. If either player can hear me, just play it out. Oh, Sidnev is back at B. What the hell? B47 for Sidnev on level 30. Two quick Tetrises goes to C24 on level 31. What was that efficiency? And we missed all of it. What the actual hell, dude? That is insane. But Sidnev now, left side of the huge concern. Alex goes to 29 at A99, almost to 1.2. Both players now battling out. Sidnev still trying to stay alive. Alex T set up for a Tetris here on level 30. Set up, waiting on the long bar. Long bar, just nowhere to be found. Alex T needs the long bar right now. Tetris is scored, but still trails by 70,000 points. Sidnev on the verge of topping out. Tops out at C65. Alex T needs C66. That's going to be a triple, not a Tetris. C08 now for Alex T. Has brought the stack back down to the bottom. Dirty Tetris over there for Alex T. C66 is the score that Alex needs.
Couple more burn lines will do it. One more. And there it is. Alex T takes game number two. But what a game. And I wish we could have seen all of it. Because Sinup had to have done some magic in, in between all those levels that we missed. To go from a 900 and a 20... 900-ish and 26 to a 1.1, then 1.2 at level 31. Truly phenomenal. Uh, flames and nuclear. That is what you're hearing. Well, it's a it's an instrumental. Uh, flames of nuclear was the name of the song, which is mixed between Solar Sect of Myst Mystic Wisdom and Nuclear Fusion. Dude, what the heck? How how could you not be recording that? I can't believe you did. I can't believe you did. But what I can believe is that we're about to get ready in the game number three. Both players are ready. Let's go and get them counted down. Here we go in three, two, one. Tetris. What a game played from both players. Sidnev, phenomenal efficiency. And Alex T, able to basically keep up with Sidnev for the most part. We couldn't really see what happened through 28 or 27 through uh, level 30. Or level 29. But one thing that was clear. Whoa, hold on. No way Sidnev gets all the pieces for the perfect solve for this situation. Oh, miss spin. That would have been crazy, though. Because if there's one thing that you could take away from uh, the way that Sidnev has built up in this particular game, the amount of complex and creative solves that she can find is truly phenomenal. Sidnev looking for an LP. Ooh. Wow. What an adjustment on that T-piece. I actually wasn't expecting that. Sidnev going to have the lead slightly over Alex T. Very slightly. But a J-piece is being longed for. Not anymore. Oh my gosh. Sidnev is playing up so high. No way. The double j top and the aggressiveness on the team placement. No freaking way. I... What? No! Sinev survives! How the actual... <laughs> what? Another Tetris for Sinev. 177 for Sinev. 167 for Alex T. What? Bro, I'm left without words. Actually, no way. And the craziest thing is Sidnev is just unmoved. Like it's a regular day. Alex T does have the pace advantage though. And the real time lead. Holy cow. And Sidnev is about to be just in regular scoring position. Sidnewell is open. Knocks down a Tetris. My gosh. Tetris to score for Sidnev. Alex T will have the lead. And of course, being up 2-0. to zero is a favorable position. But uh, as we just saw, you can never count Sidnev out. And all it takes for Alex T to run into a untimely dig. And... Knowing how well Sidnev can pace in the post-transition, that 
lead can be easily recuperated. But oh my gosh. Somebody had better clip that. I gotta see that again. Wow. Another Vitz over here for Sinev. Really trying to push pace as much as possible. And... I mean, so far, it does look to be working out. 423 to now 429. Alex T. Oh my gosh, the adjustment bits this time around. Oh, Sinev looks like she's going to go. Yeah, she's going to go for the aggressive Dirty Cinewell. But it looks like we are running into a drought. There's one Tetra. There's another. And it's set up for a third. And if this long bar comes, that'll be a perfect well transfer. Well, not anymore. 515 for Sidnev. One Tetris remains, and Sidnev is just going to burn a 540 transition. Truly phenomenal. Alex T at 544 is going to have the advantage. There is Tetris for Alex T. Sidnev at 566. Tetris ready now. Alex T with two more to go. Another Tetris for Sidnev. And great adjustment on that eyepiece. There's one more Tetris left for Alex T. A 600k transition is on the table. And that's exactly what we're going to get. 616 transition for Alex T. Sidnev is in a must-win position. Has to win this to extend the set. Alex T looking to win this to put his team in an ideal position to take the match here and tonight. However, Sidnev is going to knock down a Tetris. Goes up to 671 with the real-time lead. Alex T, of course, behind by almost two levels. Does have a pace advantage. It's going to be a Tetris scored for Alex T. Sidnev waiting patiently. Gets the T-piece. Executes the tuck. Falls it up with a Tetris. But so does Alex T. Another Tetris for Sidnev. Starting to put on some pressure on Alex Maintaining a one Tetris lead real time. But Alex with a massive pace lead. Trailing behind two levels in terms of line. And oh, the misdrop over there from Sidnev. That's going to slow her down. Sidnev going to be looking for a couple pieces to help resolve this. Could try and go for a dirty. It's not something that Sidnev... Yes, yeah, Sidnev's going to go for the dirty. Row two. But it's going to be scored. And a well transfer as well. 793 to now 775. Sinev, oh, those really aggressive. The left needs a little bit of help, and it receives it. There's a Tetris waiting on the next long bar. 830 for Alex T, 853 for Sinev. Alex T with real-time lead temporarily. Sinev takes it back in 884 here on level 25. Meanwhile, Alex T is at 888 at level 23. Sinev is doing a phenomenal job pushing the pace here. But this could get dangerous. Two eyepieces. Neither could be used for a Tetris. Well is getting up high. Not going for any burns. Really going aggressive. Takes the triple into a Tetris. 959. Make that 993 for Sidnev. Going into 27. And there's the max for Sidnev. Just rapid Tetris is in succession. Alex T at 984 here on level 25. Alex T has not slowed down one bit, but is now long bar dependent. Going to find a way to burn this down. Trying to be as efficient as possible. Sidnev already with A61. Set up for a Tetris. Will be just shy of the 1.1. There it is. Tetris for Sidnev. Tetris for Alex T. Alex T does max out here at A20, A26. And Alex T is actually running into burning problems. Sidnev at B36. Set up for a Tetris. Knocks it down. B72. Set up for another one. Knocks that down. C08. You're on level 29. Alex T at 836 at level 27. 
Sinevis set up for another one, knocks that one down. Sinevis on a Tetris thing. Frenzy is set up for another one and knocks that down as well. C86 for Sinev and another one. D24 on level 31. What is happening? Sinevis go. Oh, what a beautiful delay burn. Set up for the Tetris. Alex T has two more possible. There's another Tetris for Sinev. And Alex T, the board is starting to get in a disarray, but finds great pieces to help burn it out. Another Tetris for Sinev. E11. Hold on. But no, Sinev going to run into a slowdown. Alex T goes to 29 at B26. And now Alex T is getting set up. Sinev is set up. Alex T is set up. There's the Tetris for Alex T. Sinev had the well covered. Is that E24? Had to take the triple. Playing discipline. Alex T. C39 at level 30. Now Alex T is joining in on the Tetris spree. There is a double kill screen at level 39. So both players do have to be efficient. Didn't have it set up. Where's the long bar though? No long bar. 30 te or Cinema Tetris for Alex T. And a Tetris for Sydney. F40. What is happening? Both players are popping off. Alex T is hanging pieces to the left though. Gets the eyepiece over. Staying alive. Sitting up set up for the Tetris. There's the rollover. 1.6. Alex T going aggressive. 30 Tetris for Alex T. Oh my gosh. She's setting up for another one. Goes for the Sharky Bra adjustment. But it's not going to be any avail. The rollover from Sinev at level 37 is going to be good enough to force us to a game four. That was ridiculous. 1.7. Hold on a second. This could be a new. Wait. If the pieces fall for Sinev, this could be a new gauntlet highest. Ah, looks like it's not going to happen. The 1.76. Off of, what was that, like a five, a high 500k, mid to high 500k transition? Truly stupendous. We're going to a game number four. Two thousandth max out? Congrats. What a what a game to get it in. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Holy cow. What the actual freaking heck? This is bringing back uh, playoff vibes from uh, from Overdrive. When Sinev is ready, though, we can get players counted down to a game number four. Bro. Out of the 15 gummies, and I grab a handful of three. How the hell do I get freaking three, two coconut flavored ones? I only have four. My gosh, that's irritating. <laughs> Anyways. Both players are ready. Let's go ahead and get them counted down. Game number four. Dear Lord, what a game that was from Sidnev. Truly phenomenal. But the sweep has been avoided. However, it is still match point for Alex T. Sinev is going to have to replicate a victory here in game four in order to bring us to a decider. And the thing was, Alex T didn't play the prior game bad. Sinev just truly 
was unleashed on 29. I don't think there's really a better way to kind of describe the absolute sheer amount of lun lunacy that we saw. But right now, both players having to deal with a drought and Ooh, this could get dangerous. Alex C is in trouble. Goes for the spin. Nice. Alex C. Holy cow. Saves the game and scores the Tetris. Both players navigating that drought expertly. And that Z spin was the key to it all. Man, even on 18, there's not too many dull moments that happen in this match. There's the bits from Sinev. And the recognition for the adjustment for the J. And Sidnev at 211. So a near flawless opener. Alex T failing to get the eyepiece all the way over to the left. Something something cheese five tap. But as of right now, things are gonna be pretty stable. Sinev once again, ooh. Really tough Owen S piece. Wow. That's a lot of O pieces. That's a lot of O pieces. That's a lot of O pieces, my gosh. Alexia actually in a slight amount of trouble because of the sheer amount of, oh. That's actually a pretty clever delay bird. Alex C opens up the well, is going to have to fix up the stack, but is no longer in danger of topping out. Dude, the O... Alright, man. <laughs> Too many freaking O pieces. Dude, I swear, all I'm seeing is O's. What is happening? <laughs> There's the Tetris for Sidnev. <laughs> if you invested in O stocks, then uh, you would have made quite the return here. The only one that's making a return off of these pieces is Sidnev at 358. Alex T is at 226 behind by over 100k. And there isn't a pace discrepancy like there usually is. This is a true deficit. Alex C brought the board all the way down to the bottom. And a miss flip on the T piece. There's the Tetris for Sinev, Tetris for Alex T. He's just gonna probably try and burn this all the way down. Or no, actually gonna go for the road, continue to go for the road two. Tetris going to be scored for Sidnev. And Tetris for Alex T looking for the next J piece. Oh, mine's actually pretty... I wow, those pieces are perfect for Alex T. 311 for Alex. 522 for Sidnev. On path for a 600k transition. This is definitely what you would call a supper game on Alex T's part. Those O's really... Oh, speaking of O's, there's some more. <laughs> uh, I think that's kind of my fault. My gosh. I'm real curious to see how many O pieces these players have after this is all said and done. That is... uh, They have 54 O pieces. But they also have a lot of eyepieces. Sidnev's going to transition at 616. Alex T is going to transition at 408. And Alex T sets up a delay. Vince? She's just going to burn it out. And sets up another one. Does get the eyepiece that time. Needs looking for a second one. Wow. Gets all the pieces. That's going to be perfect. Alex T is fine. But it's going to be down by, you know... 250,000 points. 
Small deficit. And it's really up on Sidnev to just truly maintain this. Sidnev runs into a dig. Alex T can utilize that opportunity, start stacking some momentum, start making a comeback. Both players are equal or relatively equal on line count. So there is no like super advantage that you would normally see through pace. Tetris for Alex T, 571 now. Another Tetris for Sidnev goes up to 811. Alex T at, at 628. So hold on. Alex T is starting to kind of give a little bit of pushback to Sidnev. Was able to find a Tetris of efficiency somewhere. But now both players are back to scoring Tetrises at a reg at regular intervals. And Sidnev, just because the stacking so high, is starting to jump ahead in Alex T. In terms of lines, 690 to now 904. Great adjustment right there from Alex T. Sidnev is Tetris ready. So is Alex. There's the Tetris for Sidnev. There's the Tetris for Alex. 722. Another Tetris for Alex. 753. Another Tetris for Alex. 785. What a way to make utilization of all those long bars. Sidnev up at the top being forced to burn. Finally gets the long bar, able to score Tetris, scores the second one. AO3 now for Sidnev here at level 26. There's a Tetris for Alex T. Sidnev already about to have the 1.1. There is another Tetris for Alex T. 886 to now A73. Another Tetris for Alex. Goes up to 920. Sidnev with that Tetris. There's the 1.1 BO8. Alex T. Oh, narrowly getting that eyepiece over to the left. Beautiful line spin. Great execution right there. Sets up a delay burn. None of these pieces are ideal for Alex T, though. He's going to be forced to do quite a bit of burning here leading into 29. Not sure if he can find a Tetris with these pieces. Nice last second adjustment. Would we'll love a J piece or an eyepiece. Either or works. Finds neither. Sets up for a dirty Tetris. Needs the long bar. Needs it now. There's the long bar. Dirty Tetris. 970 for Alex T going into level 29. But has to get the well open. Hits the 5 tap. Well is open. Not a Tetris but a triple. C74 for Sidnev. It's up to Alex T to try and make the comeback here. Down by almost 350,000 points. But bringing the stack down. Looking for an L. Finds the L. Finds the perfect T piece. And Alex T set up for a Tetris now. Knocks it down to A45 to now D66. Great survival from Alex T. Sinem's having to do some burning here. So there is possibility that Alex T can at least take away from the deficit. Whoa. Long bar column nine for Alex T. Misses the tuck. Needs the long bar right now. Not going to get it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to a decider. Sidnev at E35 is going to be good. Crazy back-to-back -back performance from Sidnev here in these past two games. Oh, Sidnev for the dirty too. Dirty Sidnevo Tetris. No way. Ah, no more long bar, but we are going to a decider. What a game. Up next, we'll be having Mari versus Packy to determine if a sudden death is reached or if the match gets closed out. But ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get these two players here counted down for the decider. Here we go in three, two, one, Tetris.
Alex T was unable to ever recover from the way that level 18 was. Played comparable to Sidnev on level 19 through 28. And had some amounts of efficiency to try and make a comeback on the post-29. But overall, it was Sidnev, the one that just had a strong game. And is looking to go for a third one. Alex T with the delayed bits this time around. Able to still find the second Tetris without having to burn. Both players are going to be starting off flawless. A lot of S pieces here. JP Stipendency is going to be built. But looks like things are going to be fine. Neither player has been forced to take a burn just yet. However, Sidnev might be reaching that territory soon. Yeah, Sidnev is going to be forced to take at least two burns. Alex T going to be able to maintain the flawless Tetra streak here. Dirty Tetris over there for Sidnev. going to be a split double can go for oh hold on a second if an eyepiece comes this could be very beneficial alex t small misdrop as both players wait for this eyepiece beautiful delay burn set up over there from alex couldn't utilize the tetris but can use the next one sitting up just going for these dirty row threes 190 to now 187. Sidnev with the pace advantage, but is going to have to take some burns here. Just really going aggressive. Early on in 18, going to be playing a lot at the top. There's the Tetris for Sidnev. Alex T, long bar to pin it in the center. Alex T actually goes for the Tetris. Doesn't opt to fill in the dependency. Whoa, clever placements on those J's, though. And Alex T opts to not use the J to burn either. Dirty Tetris and the well transfer. Both of these players are going so aggressive. 285 to now 283. And a lot of ambitious overhangs are being set up over here from Alex T. Specific pieces are needed to execute this properly. There's one. Nice. Combo spin over there. Sitting up with the one Tetris lead, though. But it's up top. Needs the long bar. Just the long bar. It's going to stay alive. Absolute nerves of steel being displayed from sitting up. There's the Tetris. And it's back to the left-hand side. As a matter of fact, the long bar comes right this instant. That'll be a well transfer back over to the right-hand side. 399 for sitting up. 335 for Alex T. That is ridiculous. Alex T forced to set up a very high delay burn. Now looking for the next eyepiece. There it is. Tetris for Alex T. Not too far behind either. But it's going to be looking for a T piece. Gets the T piece. That O piece doesn't make it all the way over to the left. It's going to have to maneuver carefully around that. Nicely done. Alex T going to need just a tad bit of help here. Oh, that's going to be perfect. And the well gets open. 452 for Sidnev. 392 for Alex T. But players are going to knock down a Tetris. Sidnev was a dirty center. Alex T finds another Tetris, actually. Sidnev's board wasn't ready for it, but is ready for the next one. Tetris for Sidnev goes up to 499. Alex T at 461. Another Tetris for Sidnev, 522. A 600k transition is possible for Sidnev. Alex T is looking at a high 500. If things go according to plan. Both of these players ready to ascend to a higher speed. Level 19 
is less than 10 lines away, one Tetris away for Sidnev, two possible for Alex T. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Holding out for the next long bar. There it is, Sidnev transitions, Alex T. 618 transition for Sidnev, 559 for Alex T. An immediate misdrop for Alex T. Does get the piece all the way over to the left, but is in down stacking mode. Sidnev not ready to score Tetris's at the moment. So it could not hurt Alex T as much as it should, but Sidnev is now up stacked. Oh, that hole on column four that prevents Sidnev from capitalizing. Alex T knocks down the first Tetris in the post transition. And Sidnev is in down stacking mode. No way, Sidnev sets up for a dirty left ball and knocks it down. Alex T, several miss drops on top of each other. And Alex T knocks down a Tetris. Both players trying to navigate through their respective troubles. Sidnev gets out of theirs first. What a turbulent opener to the post transition we had just witnessed. And Sidnev actually goes for the conservative burn there. Alex T gets set up for a dirty left ball. Tetris knocks it down. 654 for Alex T. 721 for Sidnev. What are we witnessing in this set here? Alex T going for another column four. Putting out for the next long bar. Knocks it down. 712 to now 78. Well is open for Alex T. Well is open for Sidnev. Both players waiting patiently. Sidnev could use the long bar. Alex T. The question is, can he? Yes, he can. Both players knock down a Tetris. Sidnev knocking down a lot of Tetrises there. Another Tetris for Alex T. Is he going to continue to go for this? His aggression knows no bounds. He's going for it, and it pays off. 810 to now 875. Another Tetris for Sidnev. Alex T. Continuing to pursue this. Very aggressive. Oh, now for the next long bar. Knocks it down. Another Tetris for Alex T. 850 to now 910. Alex T. Back to the right hand side. What you want to be. Level 26. Tetris for Alex. 887. Sidnev. One Tetris away from the max. There's the max out, million points, A08. Alex T knocks down a Tetris, a Tetris didn't change away from the max. It's gonna come down to post 29. Sidnev has been on fire these last three games. Can Alex T be the one to extinguish it though? Both players have three Tetrises available before level 29. Alex T finds one, Sidnev finds one as well. One more Tetris left for Alex T. Is Sidnev holding out for the long bar. And Sidnev goes into 29. B50 here. Knocks down a Tetris. Goes up to B87. Alex T. One last Tetris remains. Alex T. Knocks down a Tetris. Goes to A96. Now at B32. Two Tetris. This is all that separates him. Sidnev knocks out a Sidnev. Tetris over there in column 5. Alex T. Hold on. That left side is a bit of a concern. He's going to cover it up with some O pieces. Now going to have to find a way to get access back into a scoring position. Is down by over 100,000 points. Untimely Z pieces over there for Alex T. But Sinev is trying to get set up. Alex T hits the log bar all the way over to the left. Knocks down the left blow. Tetris C80 now for Sinev. B30 or B85 for Alex T. Both players now has brought the stack down to the bottom. Just trying to get back into a scoring position. Alex T still needs to burn some lines. There's another Tetris for Sinev. D28 here on level 32. And these pieces just aren't right for Alex T. He can't get set up. He might be going for something over here. Oh my gosh, the aggression. Dirty Tetris over there. Or not dirty. Cinema Tetris over there for Alex T. And the left side gets addressed as well. Now Alex T has to get back in the scoring position. Still trailing by over 100,000 points. Cinema trying to get set up for another Tetris over here on the right. Well, holding up for the long bar. Nice couple of burns. Not taking it. It's going to take another double. Waiting patiently. Waiting patiently. What a drought that this is. Still waiting. Where's this long bar? There it is. Cinema just barely gets it over. And it's still going to maintain it. Reopens up the wheel. Alex T in trouble once again. Needs something to help, burn, help him burn out of this. Gets the eyepiece. But that left side. He throws the O piece all the way over to the left. He's in down stacking mode. Great piece for the flat burn. No way Alex gets out of this. He's surviving. But the problem is. 
We're getting close to the end. Sinev has F43. Alex T setting up for the Tetris. Sinev finds it. F90. There's the Tetris for Alex T. D40 now. Sinev. Things are going into disarray. Alex T is set up for another Tetris. Here, here in the center well. Needs all the Tetris that he could get from this point forward. D91. Sinev has rolled over the score. 1.6. Alex T just has the 1.3. Wait. It's just even possible. How? I'm not sure if it's possible. Sidna might have just got enough. There's nothing Alex C can do. Alex C tops out at E54. Sidna takes the decider. Weighty ones now lead the match 2-0. to zero. What a set from Sidna. Holy cow. Absolutely ridiculous performance the past three games. And if you're Alex T, what can you do? Crazy reverse sweep performed over there by Sidnev. Absolutely ridiculous. But it's not over. The Drywaller still can force a sudden death. However, that's up to Packy and Mari to decide. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be right back as we get those players set up for our final match for tonight. So, don't go anywhere. It is far from over. Barchild, thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. Aw, I just realized when I went to fix Alex T stencil, it butchered my scene. I'm upset. That sucks. It means I gotta fix it. Unlucky. My scene's just broke. What the actual hell, dude? It's crazy.
actually really frustrating. Hmm. Oh well. It happens, I guess. Love OBS. No, it's not over. We still have another game and a potential sudden death. I'm fixing up uh, the scenes right now because OBS is dumb and it destroyed my scene because I uh, fixed Alex T. Stencil. So, yeah, that's the thing, apparently. Players, do you want SPS? Bro, see, this is why I hate OBS. This mess should have been updated. Give me a second. Studio mode, do your job. There we go. See a yes for SPS from Packy. Well, I kind of have to use studio mode because I do the stuff behind the intermission. I mean, sometimes, you know, it just doesn't work as it's supposed to. I'm fixing it. <laughs> now we go back. <laughs> miss my mouth I was trying to toss a gummy in there all right looks like we got it ready for Mari <clears throat> excuse me and we got the ready from Packy the wavy ones are up two to one let's see if we can close out the match right now or if we see a sudden death Get them counting down to their first match. Here we go in three, two, one. Tetris. 
Ah, yes. The double three O's here in the opener. Different opening stacks, though. And Packy's going to be the first to get a Tetris. Mari was just one Mino shy. And in Packy's last match, he went up against the Rogues. Just barely lost in the Decider. This is Packy's second match of Gauntlet. And Packy made it into, into Waco's gold bracket. And played admirably up against Andy, too. But there's quite a bit of pressure on both players. The pressure for Mari to avoid a sudden death. And the pressure on Packy to force a sudden death. Normally, it would be the captains that face this kind of pressure. But due to how things are... It is the Diamond players. But we are going to be tied here, 116 to 116. Packy long bar dependent, not too happy with that either. So he's going to be forced to do some burning. Great flat T burn. It's going to be a nice trip over there for Mari. Ooh, things are getting a tad bit complicated for Packy, but he's finding these really smart burns. Mari almost Tetris ready. Packy just looking for an eyepiece to fill in this dependency. Or an L piece, that actually is going to work out perfectly. Tetris for Mari. Packy wasn't ready at the moment, but is ready now. Just waiting on the next long bar. Whenever that is. One sixty-three now for Packy, Mari at one ninety. As things currently stand, both players in a pretty comfortable position. Packy trailing just by a Tetris. Make that two following the Tetris for Mari. Two and a half Tetrises. Er, two and a little over a Tetris. But definitely a competitive game. Both of these players are DAS. So we're not going to be seeing uh, any 29 play unless Mari decides to switch grip. Oh, wow, the aggressive adjustment from Packy. Clean play so far, though. We are closing in on level 19, about two thirds through level 18. Packy keeping the will open. Tetris for Packy. Mari also Tetris ready. This is just a really good game. It's almost as clean as you can ask for coming from players of the DAS playstyle. This piece was a tad bit unfortunate for Packy. And Packy's going to get Tetris ready. Tetris for Packy. 384 for Packy. Mari now with the center well here at 426. And Packy just going to burn this all the way out. Not going to play too aggressive. 
We are nearing the level 19 transition. Packy trailing by three Tetrises at the moment. Slightly off sync Simo Tetris right there. And Tetris is going to be scored from Packy. Mari is actually running into a small slowdown. One more line to the transition for Packy, and he's already set up the burn to take him there. Packy transitions, 462, knocks down a Tetris, goes up to 486. Mari also with one line to go before transition. Packy. Ooh, a couple of tough pieces. Going to be forced to do some burning here. Mari goes to transition. Five away and just barely gets the long bar over. Two Tetris lead for Mari. Packy trying to avoid going too aggressive. Not going to go and set up for that off right wheel Tetris. Mari in the lead by 40,000 points. So definitely not insurmountable. It's going to knock down a Tetris. Starting to put a little bit of pressure on Packy here in game number one. Packy gets set up for a Tetris though. Waiting patiently. Throwing pieces over to the left. Ooh, that Z piece was a bit rough. Beautiful delay burn set up over here for Packy. But unfortunate placements afterwards. Not really too much that Packy can do. Trying to get a couple extra lines. But it's going to top out at 507. Mari at 598 is going to be good for game number one. But what a beautiful 18 played from both players there. And Mari just narrowly avoiding a potential fatal miss drop. I'm going to try and get all these coconut gummies out the way. Bro. I could have sworn. Dude, she like gave me like 10 of these. That is correct, increment. So the next seed should be 8F. All right, got it ready from both players. Mari is up one game to none. Let's see if Packy can equalize. Here we go in three. Two, one, Tetris. Mari with a misdrop on the second piece. Had to burn one line as a result of it. No, they say you don't you can't misdrop your first piece, but second piece is free game. I mean there's still one way to misdrop your first piece. It is possible. But you shouldn't see that at high level. That being said. Things have... Oh. Mari. Very complicated situation early on. Might be giving a gift to Packy soon. TP's comes. T-spin is missed. Oh, that's dangerous. Mari tops out at 25,000. We are tied 1-1. But Titrus, the thing is, do you even know the piece to miss drop? Uh, to... Actually, I forgot how you miss drop your first piece. I totally forgot. There was one piece. There's one way to miss drop your first piece, where it's just like super bad. Okay, no, I maybe it's two ways. Yes, 9-0. That is correct. Miss 
drop a piece of chicken. <laughs> All right, we got it ready from both players. The match is tied, one to one. Let's see who's gonna be the one to break that tie. Here we go in three, two, one, Tetris. Start things off. Packy already having to force a couple of early burns. And ooh. This is not the most comfortable of situations. Still very diggable. Another long bar would be a godsend over here for Packy. And hey, commentator's blessing. Of course, Mario was able to use those long bars to score Tetris's. He's only taken two burn lines so far. Great eye placement, too, over there from Mari. And right now, both players having to deal with uncomfortable stacks. Oh, great placements over there from Mari. You can see Mari's like, yeah, I approve of that. Mari's like, oh, Sharky saw it too. Yeah, it was definitely good. <laughs> Anyways, 197 for Mari. Make that 220 for Mari. 141 for Packy. Two ninety six for Mari, two thirty six for Packy. Down by sixty thousand points. Similar kind of what we saw in game one. And ooh, Packy. Not getting pieces that he's too happy with, but finds an efficient way to burn out of it. Three seventy four for Mari, a strong game here, and Haki. Oh, does get the L piece that he was looking for. And has to go for the burn. Just barely had enough dash to get it over. Wow, these jagged pieces are not helping Packy out at all. Four twenty-two for Mari. Packy at two ninety-nine. Packy fills in one long bar dependency and gets an eyepiece to fill in the other. Staying alive. 
Mari closing in on over a hundred or not closing in, but already has over a hundred fifty thousand point lead. Tetris from Packy is gonna cut into that slightly. Of course, we are nearing the transition. Three fifty one now for Packy. Down by 140,000. Mari's taking a few more conservative burns. The pressure has been put on Packy here in this game. A 518 so far for Mari. The well is open for Packy. Tetris is scored. One more is available. Mari. Opens up the well. Good timing on the eyepiece. Packy's transitions at 428. Mari transitions at 569. So 140,000 point lead on level 19. Not insurmountable, but definitely a difficult chase down. However, this is Tetris. Anything's possible. We saw a crazy reverse sweep in our last match. So. Right now, both players level 20. Mari really focusing on taking his time getting Tetris ready. There's a Tetris for Packy. Closing the gap ever so slightly. Mari has been just playing very conservative. Packy forced to take a couple of burns. And nothing wrong. Oh. Does find a solution to help burn that out. Mari now in some trouble. This could be a golden opportunity for Packy. Well is open. Packy, Tetris ready. Waiting on the next long bar. And is waiting on it. Gets the old piece. Nice quick tap over there for Packy. But Packy decided not to go for the burn. Maybe didn't have enough dash. Gets the long bar over. Packy survives. 509. Mari's also surviving as well. Packy, oh my gosh, goes for the dirty Tetris. And wrong rotation there. Not too much that Packy could do. It's going to top out at 511. Almost had it. And just in time for Mari to. Mari now leads the match 2-1. to one. We do have it ready from Packy. Mari getting hydrated after a very scary game. All right, the players are ready. Let's go ahead and get them counted down. Packy needs this game to force a decider. Here we go in three, two, one. Tetris. Wow. Double eyepiece opener. And both players play it vastly differently. Packy. With arguably the better opener. Did have to take some burns more than Mari at least. Mari is the first to score Tetris, and Packy follows up. And Mari just cheesing hard because he knew that that was a interesting way to open up with uh, with the double long bar opener. I mean, after all, that used to be a uh, for those of you that have been in the community long enough. That used to be the old adage: just spam left. And right now, Packy needs to find a way to get out of this. Stays alive, just needs to mentally reset now. Das is a play style of control. And once you lose that control, very drastic things can happen.
on the someone watching on YouTube said three two one pills. So it looks like we got both a Dr. Mario and Tetris fan. Becky. Ops to get clean as soon as possible. And fortunately these pieces are very complex to deal with. This is a lot of garbage that Packy's going to have to navigate through. And with no games left to give, Mari has to survive. And Mari is not in any danger, as a matter of fact. He's chilling. You know, swiveling in the chair. He's comfortable. Packy still trying to find a way to navigate through this. One more eyepiece will help bring him out of this. But that's the thing. It has heard. Nice. Actually, great finds over there from Packy. It's going to bring the stack down by a tremendous amount. And Packy now just one line away from getting access to that hole in column five. Great survival effort over there from Packy. Packy operating with a center wheel here. Mari, uh, something happened. It's going to be something that forces some burns. Set up for the bits. Oh, I forgot. Mari plays for the wavy ones. There's the touch that's going to be scored for Mari. 321 for Mari, 191 for Packy. Packy looks to find himself in a situation similar to the last game. However, just can't really get into a position to string Tetris's together. Is surviving, and that is, you know, an important part of the battle. Lamari is closing in on a 200,000 point lead. There is Tetris for Mario. He does get... Oh, nice adjustment. Goes for the triple. A lot of triples have been taken over here from Packy. But now, Tetris just can be scored down by 200,000 points. It's going to be a tall order. Two sixty-two now for Packy. Four sixty-five for Mari. And Packy missing the spin there. Mari, hold on. Some complications have arisen for Mari. This is actually not obvious. Oh, that miss drop could actually be very lethal. That miss drop was fatal. Mari tops it at 490. An opportunity has opened up for Packy. Packy needs 491. Some Tetrises will be needed. But it's possible. 491 is what Packy needs. Packy, you're on level 20. I'm gonna just. Oh, the aggression has to take that triple. 
just getting pieces over to the left would have been too much of a risk. And these pieces aren't the best either. Oh, that Z piece was terrible. Packy narrowly being able to maintain just enough dash to get pieces in desired locations. This is by no means an easy chase down. Eyepiece makes it over to the left. Hundred and fifty thousand points remain. Great survival over here from Packy though. Doing what he can. Eyepiece. <gasps> Wait, no, things are going wrong. That left side. Packy would need a frame perfect quick tap, and even then, it's not going to burn anything. Packy tops out at 355. Mari takes game number three. The Wavy Ones end up taking the match 3 to 1. Evening out their record 3 to 3. The Drywellers now go to 4 to 7. Such a heartbreaker. But all in all, great games played from everyone. That was my phone. But, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for tonight's Gauntlet stream. I hope you all had an absolute blast. Tomorrow, come back tomorrow, 4.30 p.m. Central. Millionaires versus Sparks and Minos. A match you certainly don't want to miss. With that being said, we're going to send the raid. You know what? Let's surprise James Shin. I'm going to send the raid over to James Shin. No problem, Alex C. I'm sure James Shin will appreciate the raid. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your favorite underwater host, Sharky. 